Hello YouTube friends. A bit of a different video today. Uh, I'd invited my friend to come and visit. She and I used to work together. Oh, just so you know, this um, this bit of the chopping the veg is on t twice speed. It's on double speed. I can't chop that fast. So I was making a bit of uh, stew to have after we'd done the job that I'd asked her to come and do with me. Susan, a fantastic beekeeper, has been for many, many years. And I've only been keeping bees for, say, I don't know, two years now. And she uh, has more bee knowledge. Uh, it's, uh, it's brilliant what she knows about bees. And I had a job to do in the bees today. And I was a little bit worried that I'd get it right. So I asked her if she would come. And also so that I could film it. So I'm just chopping that courgette into the stew there. There we go. It was just a big vegetable stew. Uh, there's a sweet potato going in now. Some butternut squash and carrots and onions. Um, and we just had it cooking on the whole time we were working uh, so that when we came back in again, uh, there was something nice to eat. Yeah, sweet potato there. Um, okay, here comes the spices. A teaspoon of uh, ground coriander, teaspoon of chili flakes, a little bit more. Uh, what's this next one? Ground cumin and ground turmeric. I like turmeric. Okay, so I just left all that lot stewing away. Uh, the other pan that's just appeared there has got some brown rice in it. So it's going to be a nice healthy meal for when we'd finished looking at the bees. So I, I have a spare bee suit and Sue wore that. And we got ourselves all togged up, lit the smoker, got everything ready. And we went down to the area of the garden I call the apiary. So the first thing Sue did was just introduce herself a bit with the smoke, just to tell the bees that we were there. And then off comes the lid or the roof. And we just had a quick look. If you can see, there's a small box on top of a bigger box. And the small box is where they make the honey. It's called a super. So we just had a quick look in the super. And Sue was just looking to see if there's any honey. And there were four or five frames of honey that I can extract. Uh, but our main purpose today was not about looking for honey. So we took that box off and put it there. And the green thing is called a queen excluder. And that stops the queen from coming up into the place where the honey is stored and laying eggs. So we just used a fair bit of smoke there just to alert the bees. And uh, they all kind of go back down into the brood box when you do that. So we're going to peel off the queen excluder. The queen's quite big and, and, and fatter than the ordinary bees and she can't get through those spaces. Now there are 11 of these frames in a hive. So we're going to take the first one out. Just have a quick look at it and see what's on the frame. We're looking for all sorts of different things while we're looking at these frames. But we take one of them out and put it on that red thing at the back there so that then we can take the others out. Now, it looks like a bit of a struggle to get them out. And that's because the bees stick everything down with propolis. So you have to use that metal tool in her right hand that's called a hive tool. Now, we're looking at the frames now to see what... What's on the frames, apart from the fact that there's lots and lots of lovely, lovely black bees. So we're just checking them out here because what we're looking for is those things. They're queen cells. That is a queen cell. So the bees make a queen cell and there'll be a queen bee growing inside there. That's the way that bees reproduce. And that's when they swarm when they've got another queen in the hive that they don't need. So we were trying to make a split so that instead of them swarming, I could put them into two boxes. Those little white blobs were larva that haven't been capped yet. So Sue's shaking the bees off the frame. It was great that she was doing this, not me, so I could actually film it. And that one she's decided has got enough brood and food and worker bees on it that she can put it into the second hive that we were making up. Now there's 11 frames and so we were going to put five in one and six in another. 
and we, we left six in the box that we were taking them out of and put five new ones in the, uh, the, that turquoise uh, hive behind us there. So in order to just see what's on the frame, it doesn't harm the bees, we just shake them off and they go, they go back, you know, where, where they came from, they go back wherever they were. And so that's another frame that she thought was good enough to put into the new colony. This is a very pop a common thing to do, making a split of your bees like this. So she was selecting frames for the new hive, but also not leaving the old hive without a nice balance of bees. Now, we didn't see the queen at all, but we put um, ha uh, frames in the new... Oh, hello, bee. We put frames in the new colony. Now, I'm going to show you here, look. There is a queen cell there that has emerged. The queen has come out of that. So we know that on, on that frame or in that hive, there will be one new unmated queen there out of that hole there. So we um, left that one in that hive because there's a very good chance that the queen will be in there. And then we filled up the spaces with new combs. So the little brown dots you can see the light brown colour, they are worker bees that have been capped, uh, covered over to, so that they can gestate and they can hatch out. The bits of comb at the bottom that you can see, or the top, whatever you call it, uh, it's just little bits of brace comb that they make. That's not a problem. Um, it's not a problem at all. So Sue's so still assessing which frames that we can move across and which frames we can keep in this... Um, in the in the parent hive if you like now this is a lovely frame i think this is the one i don't know maybe it's the next one we're going to look at but there's one really really nice frame that shows you very clearly what the brood pattern is i learned loads from sue today but i have picked up loads along the way and i learned all of this stuff when i was working bees with my dad when i was a child but he, we didn't he didn't really teach me it, not really so there, we shake the bees off. Now this is, an, if I remember rightly. Okay, so you see this sort of circle in the middle. Those are all new bees that are about to emerge, worker bees. Around the outside that looks like um, empty uh, honeycomb, there'll be pollen and nectar in there and maybe even some eggs. So I think this was the last one we were looking at. And this is the one near the near the back of the hive. Uh, not much going on on that one. So we, we assembled everything up again, put everything back. We filled the gaps with new comb. And I think Sue spreads it out a bit. So it's that's right. So she's going to put another one there. So that the bees have got something else to work on. What's she doing? Maybe we need one more frame. We finished it all. We put all everything all back together again and brought all the kit back up uh, the garden. I have got two beehives down there now. And then we had some supper. That stew that I'd made was ready. It was ready to eat. It was very delicious. And I think we'd really, really earned it. So Sue's a good friend. It was really great of her to come and help me do that so that I could film. And uh, we had a great day. So I'll let you know how that split goes if you're interested. Thanks so much for watching.